What's going on everybody? My name is Steven. You're watching Foul Air Gun Channel. And today we're going to be taking a look at something a little bit different today. It is a Beretta. Specifically, the German-made Beretta 92FS comp number 8 competition. This is a all steel frame uh, replica of the Beretta. And it is a true replica. Uh, weight is just about on point. The fuel, the ergonomics, everything, it's all there. So this is a non-blowback CO2 competition pellet pistol. And uh, this specific model here is the German-made one. They make one uh, they make several of them anyways, the 92 uh, FS as just the, I believe, uh, I'm not sure if it's made in China or the United States or where it's made at, but uh, this one specifically here is the uh, Beretta model from, from Germany. So, what I want to do a video today on is, <clears throat> I originally purchased this rifle a long while back, I haven't had any chance to really mess around with it any. And I got bored the other day and I decided I was going to pull this out and take a look at it and uh, see what kind of accuracy and everything I'm getting with this thing. Uh, when I purchased it, it actually had uh, issues with some seals that were blown in it. So that's what we're going to deal with today. Uh, I've already fixed this pistol. This pistol is phenomenal. I've already fixed it and I've as well started customizing it because of course I cannot keep myself from uh, modifying stuff. Uh, luckily, specifically the way I've modified this pistol, uh, it can all just be done right back over to uh, factory original way. So, we are going to take a look at disassembling this pistol here and reassembly. And it's going to be quick, and if you just uh, pay close attention to what I got in this video for you here, then you guys will be able to get the, the whole deal. So... Again, the Beretta 92FS, this is specifically the German-made model. And I'll tell you, there are some, some differences uh, between the German-made model and the model that I have seen elsewhere. I'm not, like, again, I'm not sure if it's American-made or if it's uh, made in China, which is probably more likely scenario. Uh, so anyways, uh, there are some differences here to the pistols. So this one is, again, speaking specifically to the German-made Beretta 92 FS. All right, so we're gonna get right into this thing. We have the manual here. German manual. Two pellet magazines here, and these are loaded up with our uh, Crossman Premier hollow points. Let's do this. We're gonna remove this. Pull our mat down here. Okay, so. Hopefully I'm getting a good view for you all here and you can see this. You're only going to need some basic tools. Uh, you won't really need fine tip needle nose pliers, but I would advise having a pair on you uh, just to be for sure. Uh, you also want a small tool. I imagine you could probably use lots of other things for what I use this for. But this here is just a small dental pick and I have just right on the very end that very small point. It's just bent a little bit like a right angle. And that's just going to help me to grab on the springs and things of the sort and you're gonna need this here which i believe this may be like a, t a two mil uh allen key here and then this really small guy here i don't know the exact size on that and uh yeah so let's get right to it all right so the very first thing we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to go ahead and remove the plastic cover here so we're going to press the eject button and that just pops this case open on the side here we want to make sure we keep everything nice and uh, nice and together here. You always want to make sure that you pay real close attention to when you're taking stuff apart. All right, now the very next thing we're going to want to do is come right up here, and we're just going to go ahead and remove this sight, and that is where this really small Allen key comes into play. You just want to insert it in there, turn it to the left just a few times, and it doesn't matter which way you slide it left or right, it's going to come right out. Okay, so we're going to put that off to the side here. Now the very next thing is this. 
on the Beretta German model, it comes with this extender here on the end. This is a, sort of like a muzzle brake here. And it has these two screws on the side. That actually just holds this piece together. So it's not really necessary. You want to take your small Allen key here. And then you want to just take the long end and insert it down. And there is a small Allen key screw right in the bottom there and you just want to take that and rotate it to the left just hold on to everything as it comes off there's no springs or anything here so you're good to go i just leave my tool sitting right in there easy peasy now we have a set here now what we want to do is you want to remove the top part of our slide here you just want to push down this would normally just eject opening up uh, where you would see your magazine, but when you remove from the front, it allows you to completely just slide this thing off entirely. Okay, now the, the spring goes right here on the front, okay, like so. And when you take the spring off, set this off to the side here with the top half of our slide. There's a washer right here. If you just pull, you can really just dump that washer out there. You pull that right up, and if you notice, the round end is going to go in the bottom, sitting right down in there like that, okay? Keep that together. All right. Now we have the top part of our slide off. Now we want to go ahead and start disassembling. First thing we want to do is come right up here to the safety. Just give it a few turns. And you know, something that I noticed while I've been working with this rifle is, or this pistol, excuse me, is that even if you look here at these screws, even these machine screws here are really special. These are not uh, just your basic, you know, flathead type machine screw here. This is a special screw. So we want to just set that off to the side there. All right, very easy. You have one, two, three of these flathead machine screws here so you just want to take them out set them to the side they are all the same length so you're not going to have any issue with that at all just want to keep them together here all right <clears throat> very important you don't want to you don't want to go prying in between the cracks of your your pistol here all crazy because this is where you're going to end up gouging all the stuff up and if you see the surface is real nice and clean so you don't want to do that so what i advise doing is kind of a more of a rocking what i do is i just grab it from uh this is two parts of the frame here is going to separate and what you want to do is oh i'm skipping a step here okay so once we pull out these uh these screws here you have the safety and then these three here into the frame this is where this guy is going to come in okay so you're going to grab this right here and i'm going to have to take you off my head for just a moment here all right so <clears throat> if you look right down in here trying to get some light going on in here if you look right down in there you'll see that spring right there okay and that spring is attached around the end on that little pole right there okay so what you're going to want to do is take your small tool and here let me try to get some light up over here a little bit better light anyways all right so what you're going to want to do is take your little tool here and just pull that right off of there and you'll see that spring is just going to flop around it's it's connected on to another piece on the inside there so it's not to worry but yeah you're just gonna move that off to the side right there so that's just off and hanging off of that little pole there okay all right get you back on my head here All right, so once you have that spring removed inside, now we're going to go ahead and separate the case, okay? So you, it, sh it can come apart if you want to just do it all by hand, moving it around. We're gonna, you just want to try to work your way all the way around, trying to slowly pull it up as evenly as possible. 
and there's nothing else holding this on now you just want to lift it straight up in a way just nice and easy so you just shift it real nice and slow all right and then we're going to set this off to the side and for anybody that may be curious about this side of the pistol uh this side of the pistol just houses uh part of the sear right here which is what goes back uh to actually uh, initiate the hammer here and there is one spring inside of here and that is a tension spring that is from that pole to a pole that is stationary on this uh on the face of this uh this side here and that's just what's going to help keep tension to pull it back you also have right here this very small aluminum block with a spring underneath it and that's just to keep tension on it upwards there so we want to set that off to the side there all right and that's the funds here the fun stuff this is our spring right here that we took off that was originally wrapped around that pole there okay take a good second take a look at some things let's point out some springs here okay so we have this spring here behind this bar which is part of the sear it's pressing against the hammer here okay and then we have this spring here which is actually going to be our hammer spring that's going to give the amount of tension that we have that's going to hit the valve here we have a spring here and this is all just part of the contraption the mechanism that will release the slide here we have spring here that keeps tension from up and down and we have this tension spring here for pull all right and then we have just one oh, when we have this spring down here the spring right here is just for tension on the uh the mechanism that collapses the co2 in that punctures the co2 and we have another spring right here you have this piece this is one that you're going to, want to pay attention to so you just want to lift it right up straight out and if you lift it up it has this very small spring right here on the back side of it and what i've actually done in order to to keep myself from losing the spring is I've actually just put a very, very, very light amount of super glue down. This has a hole uh, on this aluminum piece here where the spring sits down into. And if you want to avoid losing that little piece, because it sits down right inside of that really small groove there. So you just want to make sure you don't lose the spring. So I just put a very small, some very, very, very small amount of super glue on the end of it just to hold that spring into that piece of metal, okay? So you want to make sure you have spring and all there. Set that off to the side there. Okay. Now, this comes up right here. This is the part that has our spring attached to it. And you'll notice in the back it has this little track that runs through it. Okay. And that is going to be... That pillar sticking out right there is what runs inside of that track, okay? So, that's your other small piece there. You have this, if you pull it, and if you notice, there's actually a really small flat wave spring right here. And if you notice that, it's just a very small spring. It's a contour spring. That's just to keep tension on this ear here. And this ear is what rotates the magazine as you fire. So, you can take that guy out there. There's no need to really remove this unless you need to that spring down in there uh if you're really you know extremely concerned that you're going to lose it or something that's that's something that you can absolutely do all right <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and remove this you remove it that little spring there this one end of the spring sits right in here the other end of the spring sits right back in that small catch right there so we're going to remove that off to the side our spring here now uh on my pistol i have this uh nylon washer here and this just adds a little bit of tension onto that hammer because that's added me just a small bit of uh velocity a little less on the shot count but not a huge difference it does give a little bit of velocity so that's just my doing do not worry about that you have the small plate down here this aluminum plate on the bottom which has a little hole in the bottom a square hole and there's this uh this aluminum bar runs down right into the bottom of it so if you lift it up it's pressed down by the spring there it looks just like this and it sits right in there like this so if you were to not have washer on there it would look just like that 
and when it sits in there you want to make sure that the square is towards the case and that the so the long end is facing up like that okay so that when you stick it in there it's sitting in like this you understand okay so let's put that off to the side you also have here this is the safety uh, it's actually the uh release for the side cover here uh so you have your press button for the release for the side cover it has just a spring right here on the back and that's just for the the tension when you press on it to move it back where it needs to be okay this piece here just lifts straight off now i'll tell you i do not remove the plastic cover on the other side and the reason for that is because this piece right here uh this steel catch is actually just being held into the back by that plastic uh the other plastic handguard so it's good to just leave that on there unless you're looking to remove this piece there's really no need to remove the guard on the other side all right now let's talk about removing the most important stuff here this is all pretty self-explanatory here uh this plastic all comes right out and all that that's just real simple stuff I'm not gonna mess with this at all if there's anything that you need work on with that feel free to ask me in the comments or anything we can get to that in another video this is just a really simple mechanism to save us some time i'm not going to bother messing with it it's pretty self-explanatory honestly this is something that we are going to have to pay a little bit of attention to okay now what i have found as far as for me the easiest way to do this is just do like this here first you want to come right here to this where this brass piece is well actually i, I lie what you really want to do is first make sure the pistol is in the fire position so you want to rotate the safety up and what you'll notice is that actually brings this small groove right here where the back of the valve stem is right back here on the back because what happens is if you notice right here there's actually there's a small pin right here and that actually is struck by the hammer and then it moves the actual pin inside of the valve so you want to rotate the uh safety into the firing position and then you just want to just grab it and just rock it a little bit and while you're pulling up at the same time slowly rocking it first thing that's going to come out is this square head here on the front and it's got a small spring behind it and all that is is small transfer port with a little uh, o-ring on it which by the way this is what was causing a lot of not this i apologize was actually one here but this is one that i did end up replacing was this small o-ring on here o-ring goes on the inside there guys drop that down in spring just sits right on top we can set that off to the side there okay now getting the rest of the valve out has been uh it's been Pretty frustrating figuring out the quickest way. So here's what I've figured out. Make sure that you have nothing that's really just going to go flop and fall on around. Here's our trigger here. You set that off to the side. Everything else is going to stay in here. It's going to stay into place pretty well. So what I want to do is I flip it up right here. And if you notice, just right here in the top. Not sure if you can see that or not. But you can actually see where that valve stem makes contact with that pin in the back of that. And so what you want to do is you want to just kind of rock this safety a little bit out of the way there. Just a little bit. And whenever you, you pull this up, you're pulling it up. And then once you get it up all the way, like so, then I like to push it back a little bit. If it'll cooperate with me. Okay, let's go this route. If you're having a hard time with it like me, sometimes it just wants to pop right out and then sometimes it just wants to just be a turd. So what I've also found I can do is you can take this here and you can press that pin right there on the back and that moves that valve in at the same time. And if you press that and you can hold it, then you can actually grab this. Well, it's trying to want to give me a hard time, y'all. Any other time, I'm generally right on with this, but there we go. So if you press that in, 
at the same time it'll push that valve in just enough for you to be able to get it past this small lip right here and that will allow you pull it out okay so now we have our main valve assembly here this is going to be your power plant here you have a small seal that runs right between uh like so and that's just pressed in between there so you want to make sure you don't lose that seal otherwise you're gonna get a lot of blow by set that seal down okay i know it's a little boogered up here and that's just my doing i'll have to resurface this all at some point but for the fact that i'm over here messing with this video so much and i've been doing this quite often today taking this thing apart and putting it back together uh so before i have to resurface it i figured i'd shoot this video and so here's what we got to do if you're having any leaks with this gun this is this is going to be where your issue is number one you're either going to have issue with uh your main seal here which is right on the penetrating tab uh for where the co goes in it's co2 goes in it's, and then it's penetrated that orange seal down there is going to be one issue or you're going to have a seal inside of the valve body that's going to be an issue and i I, I I did forget to point out that you are going to need a pair of needle nose pliers for this. Now, these more fine tip ones, I generally just use them to uh, grab springs and little things that might float away from me. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to just get you a small pair of needle nose pliers or the correct tool, which I imagine they make a good correct tool for this. And uh, you want to stay as far away from that center as possible. So the more you have it spread out towards the outside, the better. What you want to do is you want to put it down in there. And you want to hold yourself real steady. And then you just turn it to the left. Okay. Just like that. Come on now. All right. So once you have it loose a little bit, then you can just go ahead and just start turning it by hand. There are There is a spring in here. So when you do this, you want to just be mindful that you're not letting anything go rolling around, okay? All right, here we go. Now, if we pull this straight out, this is what we got going on here. Spring. There's a brass, a brass slip-over washer that runs over the whole spring and everything, okay? Then you have the actual valve stem here, which if I pull that back, you'll see it makes contact to that O-ring that's right around that surface there. So that is going to be another huge culprit of a leaker right there. There's going to be that ring and that ring as well. So you pull that straight out, you'll see. All right. So make sure that if you're having any leaks with these things, these most certainly could be the two most likely causes. And uh, you want to replace these O-rings. I, I, I have so many boxes of O-rings. I can't remember exactly what size these were, so I'd have to go back in and reference that. But... I uh, may put that into uh, the description below. So these are going to be some seals that are leaking. And as well, you have this one in here. If you just dump it out, then it'll be empty. You have brass spacer. And then you have one more O-ring that sits down in there. And what this O-ring actually does is it's actually rather important too. Uh, so this one goes right over that valve stem right there. So that's going to seat in all that air inside of there. So you want to make sure... That it's making good contact seal goes in first brass uh washer there and then again you just want to take this stick that back and that in spring goes over make sure when you're putting in this brass spacer you'll notice it has a lip on it like that the closed side goes up so open is down and then you just want to set over the top and that's going to cover that small gap, that small o-ring that's inside of there. It's also going to sit on that small lip down inside of there. So, and you just want to flip it over and then you just want to take it and slowly press it together right down into its space. Start out by giving it a couple twists by hand. And then you want to just take it, get your uh, pliers again. Give it a couple twists here. And you just want to make sure that that's seated down nicely, as flat as possible, okay? And then what I like to do, just to check to make sure that everything is seating well, is I'll come over here on this flat hard surface and just very easily press in that valve stem a little bit. 
just to make sure that when you're pressing that in it's getting full motion full range of motion nothing's uh, nothing's hanging up everything feels like it's supposed to be doing okay now that you have that we can talk about this part here this here is uh, gonna be our other end and I may need this large screwdriver here so what you want to do is you want to grab this thing firmly a large screwdriver will work to get it started if you need to and you can just give it a little twist there and get it out get your pliers in there like that and I'm, again I'm very certain they make a tool for this so if you want to do it the correct way I'm sure you could look into buying some tools that would work better leave less scarring and boogering up of your uh your brass and stuff unless you you know you want to spend time resurfacing stuff machining stuff like i'm going to end up doing so then you have your brass catch here this is uh what holds the seal down in and then you have your seal try not to bugger it up when you pull it out or anything it's real nice and easy you have a seal and then you have a piece here that punctures co2 And then you have just a screen, a steel screen that goes under. Now, these, these O-rings that I've placed down in here are not factory. They do not come with the right. The reason why I have placed these down in here is to actually raise the space, uh, the height, so that I get a little bit more penetration on the uh, CO2 because the pin is not wanting to penetrate it uh fully and i've i've messed with quite a few adjustments on it so that's just kind of where i've figured my best option to be right there so screen the tool that punctures the co2 and also i've noticed that this end faces the rear of the gun uh, so again we'd be looking at it like this in there and what i actually like to do is if you look at it one side of the puncture has uh, an end that's it's shaved down a little bit and what that does is that actually helps it to slip over it so what i actually like to do is i like to rotate it away from the back of the rifle or away from the back of the pistol because when you when you go to lock this up in you'll notice how that actually just it kind of only just moves it up like this from the back so you're really getting most of your most of your pressure on that co2 capsule off on the back side so this is going to be the first side to actually puncture right there so use that make sure your gaskets your seals are nice and clean seal looks excellent drop it down in same thing to replacing take this give it a few good turns by hand and then go ahead and grab your uh pliers or your tool be careful not to try to bugger anything up And just twist it until it's nice and snug. It doesn't need to be ridiculously tight in there. You don't want to crimp on that uh, seal at all causing any damage. So that's going to be how you're replacing any of your seals or anything in here inside of the valve of the 92. So let's put this all back together. And we can do this fairly quick. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and actually here's the first thing we really want to do. First thing we want to do here is go ahead and put all this rear assembly back together. So we're going to start with that piece there. And then we're going to take our... And again, being mindful that... Like I said, the uh, pistol originally does not come with this nylon washer on it. I have added this nylon washer because it works to just give a little bit more hammer spring, a little bit tension on it. I could put a longer spring on there, but it just it's just so much to have to press that spring in. So... Now you just want to, oh, and I got that in backwards there. Set that in like that. That round end get, slides right up underneath. There's just a little groove right in the bottom of that hammer there. That that slides right up in. And then you want to take your flat bottom end here of the uh, spring here. 
and like I said, you just want to push it up on there. The small end goes down, and like I said, the majority of the aluminum is going to be sticking out on this end, okay? So we've got that in. All right. Now, this is going to help us to keep a little bit of tension to keep, a, keep that from moving there. That's the reason why I put that on. Uh, this rests right against that safety there, and so that's just going to keep that still for us while we do this. So what I do is I grab it. Take that little tiny hair off there that's wanting to hang on. Do not forget to put your seal on in between here. You're going to have a ton of blowback. Or blow by, pardon me. You're going to lose feet per second. You're going to lose velocity. You're going to lose your accuracy, accuracy and everything here. So you just want to make sure it's tied up against there. And you want to take this and you just want to press it into there and then all in one piece what i do is i take the back end where that valve stem goes and i press it and then what i do is i, I make contact with the back first of that pin inside of the safety and then what i do is i'm pulling it back against the valve stem so that it's pressing that valve stem in while i'm also pushing it down so you just got to hold it and it just takes a little bit of lining up Nothing real crazy. Just take your time, and then if you need to, you just grab that there. You can press it straight forward until that slides straight down into there, just like that. And now everything is right back where it needs to be. And hopefully, if you've had any issues with any uh, seals on this thing, that's going to be your big issue right there. So then there we go. We have completed that part, and now we're on to the fun. Real easy, guys. Make sure that little knob is sticking up there. This is going to go right in behind. And actually, you're going to have to slide it in like this. Straight from the top, underneath, below that spring, and down into that groove. Come on. There we go. All right. Now, I'm going to take this little guy here. And again, remember that peg just goes right into the back of that traveling groove there. And your trigger is going to go in so you just put that together like that and then you can just set that right down on top of that there okay don't worry about lining this this stuff up here until right when we get ready to put everything all together do not connect that spring to that pole before you go to try to put the other side of this pistol on because you will have a very 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 difficult time with that pulling the tension down on that you're just gonna it's gonna be near impossible not impossible because anything is doable, but it's definitely going to make it much more difficult. Okay, now we have our, uh, again, this is our side cover release here. And we just want to set that right down in there like that. This is going to be the sear that holds the hammer back here. So we just want to set that into its groove where it goes. And then remember, we take our spring here. And our spring goes... One side's going to be pushing tension on that. The other end is going to be held in this catch back here. So, you just want to take it and press it down. And just press that spring down in there like that, okay? The spring is pushing tension back to hold the lock in that hammer there, okay? Alright, so we got all that. Now we're going back to this piece here. And this was something that took me quite a while to figure this out to really understand. I need you all to please pay close attention, okay? Small indentation down there is where the other end of that spring sits down in. The important thing is right now you just set it right down on top of it. It doesn't have to be super pretty. Just make sure it's lined up and make sure it's sitting in there. Now it's going to be kind of flopping around, uh, hanging about in the uh, uh, most not greatest way. It kind of just sits in there. You want to keep it nice and still. Leave the pistol flat right there. All right, now what you want to do is we're going to go ahead and assemble the other side of this case. Now, when we're aligning this, there's a couple main points that you want to look at. Uh, one is going to be getting this, uh, this grip release here. Make sure that's lining in. The other thing is also right here on the back end, this pole 
like I said, that runs for the trigger mechanism. You want to make sure that that's lining up into these two holes. This is why you don't want to put the spring on because you see how these move around so much freely. You want to be able to move these around. So you want to just get that lined up, these two holes right here. Get these pieces lined up where the holes are, uh, the holes are lined up. And then what you want to do is you just want to come right on top. And I like to start right down here where this little uh, grip release is right here on the side. And I just slide it right over top of that. And you just want to slowly wiggle. And then you want to come down. And you want to be looking and looking inside of there. Making sure that this pole is just going to be lining up inside of those two pieces. Okay. And then you're going to come right up here to the top. And pull the hammer back just a tiny bit. Now, again, this is the part that I was talking about that was really important. It took me a long time. That small piece, and here I'll just have to pull this back apart again so we can see. This small piece here that has that small spring on it is going to be the whole thing that's going to stop you from putting this together. So pay close attention to that. It has to be lined up right there. So what you want to do is you want to start by setting that on, making sure everything else is lined up. And then when you come up here to the top of the pistol and you actually start to look at that small piece when you put it together when you go to try to start and put this together sometimes it'll want to try to move out of its place and try to stick itself out a little bit all you have to do is just take this here and just push this back up into its right place okay and then the whole thing will come right back together just like this okay and then now just the same thing for reassembly we're going to come right up here and start with the uh, this machine screw that goes right up in here onto the safety. And remember not to over tighten anything. Just take your time. Snug it up. And we have one, two, and three here. And again, we just want to very careful when starting these normally i'd start something like this by hand but since they're so small just gonna give it some real light easy turns on the screwdriver here first and then i'll go ahead and run these in All right, now, now that we have that, this is all put back together. The first thing that you may do is get the lower end all put together and then go, oh God, oh, I did something wrong. And you go to try to pulling on this trigger here and you're just like, oh my God, something's not right here. It's just absolutely not moving. Don't be alarmed by that. It is supposed to do that, okay? leave it like it is don't go tearing it back apart and uh worrying yourself to death over that because it's where it needs to be okay it needs to be in the locked position like that no matter which position the safety is in it's going to be locked like that all you do is you let that uh spring drop off that spacer again like i said the round end is going to go down okay and then you just take your spacer here Slide your spacer is going to go right over the top there. Spring sits right on top. And take this right into the slide there. And just right into its grooves where it's supposed to be. Uh, come on, there we are. All right. And then you just want to line that spring up down there. And then you have to, again, hit this slide release. Press it down and just pull it back lock it in and now the pistol will go back into the firing ability there and again put your safety on you have your safety everything is good to go and then for the sake of it like i said i like to keep my tool just sitting right in there just gonna set that right on top and just gonna 
tighten that back down just a little snug nothing crazy all right and there you have it <laughs> That is how you disassemble and reassemble the Beretta, specifically the German-made Beretta 92FS CO2 pistol. Beautiful pistol. And we're going to do us another video real soon. I'm doing some accuracy. So, as always, guys, make sure you like this video if you like it. If you found any useful information here, I hope this helps somebody. Uh, throughout my adventure here with this pistol, uh, I'm like anybody else, and I jumped on the internet, and I immediately started scrounging and looking on Google and Bing and everywhere else, and the only thing that I could find was information related to the Beretta 92FS, but not the German-made Beretta, and there are some differences. Uh, for instance, in the back of uh, the uh, original or the regular Beretta model uh, back here in this back section. There's actually uh, a couple other pieces that work for the hammer for the sear as far as what catches all the uh, The hammer movement and stuff. So there are extra pieces in there and there are actually uh, There are extra pieces or there are pieces that are and are not in uh, each gun. They are absolutely different. So uh, Again, like I said, this was just me going out and realizing man There was no information out here and I really need to get this out to people because if I'm looking for it, somebody else is so uh, As always guys make sure you hit like if you like my videos Make sure you hit subscribe below to follow me for more and as always We'll see you next time